How's it going? My name is James, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look and reviewing the paid VPN service, IPVanish. So, before you decide to drop some cash on this particular VPN, make sure you peep this video for our impressions on the service. So to kick things off, I'm gonna say straight up that IPVanish is a pretty average but solid paid VPN service. This may seem like a huge understatement though if you peep their website, which features endorsements by some of the top tech aggregator and review sites out there, like Mashable, TechRadar, CNET. On top of that, they claim that they had the best VPN software and apps, but does it really live up to the hype? Let's find out. So first off, let's talk about price. IPVanish offers three pricing options, monthly, quarterly, and annual subscriptions. At the time of me shooting this video, it's $10 a month for the monthly package, $77.99 for the annual package, and $26.99 for the quarterly plan. Interestingly, not even 30 seconds after I hopped onto the purchase page, the website gave me a prompt containing discounted plans if I purchase within the next 10 minutes. This dropped the price to $8 a month, $62.39 a year, and $21.59 quarterly. It did come off a bit like clever marketing just to make you feel like you're getting some sort of exclusive discount. Nevertheless, this discounted pricing puts IPVanish within the pricing range of some of the more popular paid VPNs like Nord and Express. Each plan is essentially the same. They all give you access to the same premium features of IPVanish. The only difference being the length of time you have access to the VPN service, as well as the discount that you're obviously getting. On top of that, they also offer a seven day money back guarantee. So that's for those of you who wanna just try the service first without diving in. So next, let's talk about support and features. IPVanish is available on a wide variety of platforms, including the usual suspects, Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS, as well as support for Linux distributions like Ubuntu, there's Chrome extensions, and router support as well. IPVanish is also fairly flexible when it comes to VPN protocol connections and lets you specify which protocols you'd like to connect through, such as IkeV2, OpenVPN, and L2TP. Their site offers some pretty lengthy setup instructions on how to set up manual connections via these different protocols. But if you're like me and just wanna get up and running on the VPN, you can simply download the client from the confirmation email you receive upon purchasing IPVanish. As far as VPN features go, IPVanish offers over 1,300 VPN servers in 75 locations worldwide, unlimited bandwidth, and what they claim is the fastest VPN experience. We'll be putting that to the test later in this video. Additionally, the VPN supports up to 10 simultaneous connections throughout multiple devices. SOX 5 Web Proxy for added security and IP masking. This is during P2P and VOIP connections. And very importantly, zero traffic logs. The last bit there came under a bit of contention in 2016 when IPVanish became embroiled in a logging scandal. However, since then, the company has been taken over by a new team, which does promise a strict policy against logging. So on that note, we're gonna briefly touch base on the security strength of IPVanish. The VPN held up well in our basic security tests. We did put it through the standard IP, WebRTC and DNS leak tests courtesy of IPLeak.net, as well as additional testing on DNSLeakTest.com for added redundancy. I tested multiple servers on IPLeak.net. This includes locations like Los Angeles, Rio de Janeiro and Brazil, Iceland, the Philippines, and South Africa, and they all yielded negative test results for any leaks. Similar results followed on DNSLeakTest.com. So as far as basic security goes, IPVanish is pretty solid. So next up, we're gonna be debunking the VPN speed. And we're gonna be seeing if IPVanish's speed claims hold any truth. So we put IPVanish through various benchmark tests this time using the actual Ookla speed test app for Windows. My benchmark for this round of VPN testing was about 10 ping, 77.18 megabyte download, and 13.25 megabyte upload speed. Whilst connected to the VPN, I ran speed tests in four servers located in the United States, as well as four arbitrary servers worldwide. In the United States, VPN servers more or less performed with consistent speeds, and this is regardless of location. I tested in New York, Seattle, Houston, and San Jose, an average about 69 ping, 60.55 meg download speed, and 6.93 meg upload speed. I will note that the San Jose server here was the outlier with 22 ping. That definitely skewed the results a bit, but compared to my benchmark, that roughly equates to a 575% ping decrease, 21.5% decrease in download speed, and 47.7% decrease in upload speed. Worldwide, I tested the previously and aforementioned servers in Brazil, South Africa, the Philippines, 
and Iceland. These servers average speeds of 224 ping, 41.5 meg download speed, and 4.36 meg upload. That equates to a 2,070% ping decrease, 46.20 and 67.9% decrease in respective down and upload speeds. I should mention that VPN speeds can be volatile, varying from day to day, and they're also dependent on your own connection. But in my particular case, IP Vanish didn't really offer any ground-breaking speeds here. Their US and worldwide speeds more or less perform comparably to VPNs like Winscribe, which is not only cheaper at $49 a year, but also offers free services as well. But to their credit, however, IP Vanish does provide consistent US and worldwide speeds respectively, regardless of where you're connecting on the east or west coast, if you're stateside or in Brazil or Asia, you'll usually have pretty consistent browsing speed experiences. So lastly, we're gonna be taking a look at IP Vanish's client and settings. IP Vanish offers a pretty clean user interface. Upon logging in, you're presented with a graph of the current up and download speeds, as well as a left-hand panel for all the basic features within the client. Server access is found on the bottom right-hand side with the connect button in the upper right-hand corner. So I personally found the interface slightly clunky compared to other VPN clients out there. And this is mainly because of the slower connection speed that I experienced whilst attempting to connect to different servers. For instance, I'd connect to Iceland or the Philippines and the connect button would just hang there spinning for a minute and I'd have to restart the entire client before getting any sort of connection. So maybe that's just me. I don't know if that's something that happens with you or maybe my connection speed, but that's just my experience. The server list tab does allow you to search for specific servers simply by typing in the server name or there's also a viewing list of IPVanish's worldwide servers via a top-down map. The settings menu is fairly straightforward. There's no crazy features in this VPN. In the general tab, you have basic auto connect and startup options. In the connection tab, on the other hand, this is where you'll be accessing the different VPN protocols like OpenVPN and IP2, as well as the addition of a kill switch. So overall, there's not a whole lot of frills in IPVanish, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So to wrap things up, up. Is IP Vanish worth your money? Again, it's a solid paid VPN service. If a bit average, the speeds don't fastest VPN in the world, but they are consistent across the board and they offer pretty reliable connections. However, with higher rated VPNs like Nord and ExpressVPN competing within IP Vanish's price range, it's difficult to wholeheartedly recommend this particular VPN. If their feature set or UI is something that is appealing to you though, I would definitely recommend taking advantage of their seven day trial to see how you like the VPN before going all in on the service. So with that said, I hope you found this review useful and if you enjoyed it, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could drop the video a thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section down below what other VPNs you'd like us to take a closer look at next. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe. Again, my name is James and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.